you're Rana, and welcome to FM Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, apologies in advance for this one. It's not only going to be quite a short episode, but if I sound a bit weird, it's because I've got some kind of head cold. Um, but hopefully it's not too bad and you can suffer through it. Uh, in the last episode, we had a couple of matches. In this episode, I'm probably just going to play the one, which is why it's going to be a bit of a shorter one, because I just wanted to chat whilst I was playing about uh, some of my plans for FM20, but I didn't want to do a whole episode that was just... What am I going to do for FM20? Because, to be honest, why would anyone really care? Um, and also, you're not here to see that. You're here to see what's going on with the wings. Um, so we'll kind of want to do kind of two at the same time. I've kind of mentioned it in a few of the previous videos, so some of this won't come as a surprise. Um, some of it might do. Hopefully a pleasant surprise. And I might also mention what I'm doing for my article to dictate the games. So I've had one released a week or two ago by the time this goes out, which was about uh, comparing some of the different tactics on Dictate the Game and seeing how their kind of DNA differs in terms of what attributes contribute to their success. And I think hopefully my next one's going to be about XG or expected goals and how to try and get it out of their um, match stats and general stats that you have in Football Manager. But here's the match anyway. Let's set this up first and I'll chat during the match. So we're playing Taha Island and Taha are 7th. We're 5th so we are above them. It's not a huge gap though. We are like we mentioned before quite off the pace so I'm pretty sure we're not in the O League. In fact if I look at the humpbacks, if I look at their right bit, if I look at their overview, it might tell me whether they've been put in. Yep so they're in the O League. And then who's second? Uh, sorry, no, they were second, being a third. The reason why I'm not looking at ace chance is because they're not counted as a senior um, side. I don't think they get into the O League at all, ever. Yeah, so he's gone down, so second and third have got in rather than first and second, so Huaheen are in there. So we've nothing to play for in terms of getting to the O League, but if we can keep our momentum going, we've got a reasonable chance that we might actually win the title. Actually, that's, that's a lie, isn't it? We, there's nothing here to suggest we, could, we might win the title. We might be able to put in the title challenge if they're not far off and our form is reasonable. So I think in the last match we had set up this as a kind of potential alternative tactic because I don't want to rely on our strikers when our strikers are rubbish. The problem with this is, obviously, the moment I made this change, lots of people ended up injured, giving me less options. So what I'll probably do, Spearling's going to have to come off, bring on Moreau. Good old Moreau, he's not played much this season. And Wallace up front there. Do it behind. Our natural options for that kind of whole role there, such as Spearling and Kerr, are injured or suspended. So we'll just work with what we've got for this break and come back in for Minan. The and gone. There we go. We'll go with that. That's, that's a reasonable side. We should do okay with that. Interesting. So they've actually got someone in that hole where our attacking midfield is going to be. That might nullify. We'll see how we play for the first half. And then we can make a little bit of a tactical change. If they're just completely playing Kuwait out of the game, then we'll We'll swap this round a little bit. Shaking of the hands. I might just do this go from key. Extend it just a little bit of time to talk. Don't think we can get anything from the kickoff. Right, so What's this going on? Plans for the next FM20. I'm always going to do my Tahiti save because I enjoy it. I know there are lots of creators out there who do this kind of as a job, but obviously I don't have that many subscribers. I don't have monetized um, videos. If you see any ads on the videos, it's because of the copyright ding for one of the songs I used earlier on when I was making videos. Uh, it's not going to me, it's going to a copyright holder somewhere. So it's, it's not like I have to make popular videos, I can just make the videos I enjoy. Which I know a lot of people do anyway, and are popular still, but um, this is quite niche. But I always enjoy playing FMTT, so I'm going to do that. 
<laughs> long throw to nowhere. That one there. Oh, Wallace is free. Almost. Almost. So for FN20, I'm going to take this database that I've got here. I'm going to see if I can edit it to maybe bring in the season in line with the early. So whoever win whoever's there at the end of the season um makes it through. I might also see if I can edit the early to alter the number of teams coming through. So currently it's taking teams from nations that I've actually replaced. So there are teams from I think like America's uh, American Samoa for example who we've actually replaced with the Austral Islands I think. So if those original teams in that kind of original American Samoan division are getting through into the early league which does nothing really for the league we're playing in. So I want to try and alter that. Go on Wallace. Nah. Yeah, so I want to make a, a kind of change there. So maybe make it so that the winners of the regional cups also get a place as well. I don't know if I'll be able to manage that. Or maybe the winner of the Shield of Pride gets a place. Go on, Kaiser. Wallace again. Moreau again. Everyone had a go there. Yeah, so maybe just spice it up a little bit so more teams can get the reward of playing in the early league. But make sure it's just not teams that have just the top two from the league, but maybe across the different nations that we set up. I'm also going to try and edit it so that the title winner or the winner of the Inter Island Cup gets entered into the early rounds of the French Cup, which is actually what happens in Tahiti currently. Um, I think I can't remember if it's the title winner or the cup winner, but they get into the early stages of. Um, French Cup. So it's something I'll be trying to include as well. And I might also play with some of the dynamics of the league in general. So if you've watched a lot of the videos so far, you'll have noticed there's kind of financial issues in that there's not really enough money in the league itself for being successful. So what I mean by that is, you can do really well in the league, but unless you do really well in the early league, you don't get any big injections of cash, which means this really is a very long term, say, for the kind of league to naturally develop and get to the point where there are big wages in, or amazing players for most of the teams, it's going to take a long time. So we're talking, um, like I did do a test before, you know, just for a kind of stability test, uh, where I, basically let it run for about 100 seasons and when you get to 100 seasons in there's some big money being floated around not like premiership money but you know league one championship money which is big money for uh, for this kind of league but it takes about 100 years naturally to occur on its own obviously by me being a manager this changes things and it'll probably accelerate it what i might do is just kind of go back to the finance side of it and see what kind of details I can change. And when I'm changing those details, what I'll also change are some of the details in the league around um, fines, around um, rewards, around end of season awards, things like that. Just I'll add a little bit more detail, a bit more depth to that, just to improve. So every year I want to make this a little bit better. All right, let's get the second half going. Now, wither on. Or witter on, I should say, for a little bit longer. Everyone dig in. I feel like we've actually been playing quite well. But who it's not. Doing the business, so let's get Chidi in. Give Chidi a chance. We need to be ready to take Manuel off for Renard. Uh, the other set of changes will be I might revamp some of the shirts. I'm going to try and make sure at least all the home kits are 3D kits. So if you go back to my 3D kit video, you can see uh, what our 3D kit looks like. So we're playing in our way one currently, so that's no good uh, for us. Uh, but I'm going to go and do that. And I might do a video about how I've done it, just a quick like 5-10 minute video about the process involved. Um, I'm also tempted to maybe add like an expansion team. Um, or some expansion teams. Um, so what I might do is create a pool of teams that sit below the gold, uh, sorry, the, below the silver league. So currently, if you get into the silver league, you can't be relegated. There's nowhere to go. That is rock bottom of our kind of um, pyramid, and it's closed there. 
what I might do is create like a, a feeder league underneath that isn't active, but has a selection of squads in there that are full senior squads. Um, and I might actually create another league below that as well, where their under 23s can be as well, um, sort of behind the scenes. So they've got some kind of a under 23 setup. Let's make some subs before I forget. Let's get Renard on. Kalai Wallace there. Um, so I might do that. So maybe a few of these expansion teams might end up being promoted, and I can do maybe like a, a Defugue Challenge version of taking a newly promoted team all the way to the top. But there are plenty of islands in Polynesia that we can work with, and plenty of kind of themes we could have for the teams. So if there are any you think of that you might want to see, any kind of ideas, or if you want to mm -hmm. suggest the team, um, by all means do. Uh, leave it as a comment in this video, or any video really. And Renard puts Kalai through. A decent move. Um, guess I make the suggestion. I'll see if I can put it in. So that's kind of the database. What I'm also going to do with the channel is kind of revamp things generally. So I've already got a new kind of logo. What I'll also, um, I'm trying to do is I'm learning how to use After Effects. So I'm going to try and put in a few kind of transitions and animations and things like that. I've got a couple already set up, but they're a bit. I didn't use After Effects for it. I used DaVinci Resolve, which is free and just tricky, like unnecessarily tricky. Um, so I've got like a kind of uh, water transition um, thing that I put in where the team badges appear in the on the beach and stuff like that. But it looks a bit ropey, to be fair. So I'm going to look at After Effects, create some new intros, create a few things there, make it look a little bit more flash. Because um, at the moment it's just like a static title screen that appears. Um, and what I'm also going to do... Um, that is sort of just generally try and differentiate across the different videos as well. So I'll use After Effects to do that. And I might see if I will convince my wife that it's worth <laughs> me buying a reasonable web uh, webcam. So I missed out on the last sort of Amazon sales. So I know there's one that Nerdphonic, who's part of the Five Star Potential podcast and We Stream FM, he's really good for kind of technology recommendations on his Twitter feed. And there's a Logitech one. That he recommended yeah but i missed out when it was on sale so i might get that and uh, so you might get to see my wonderful face at some point um i might do that but i might not do that for all the videos i might just do it for some or for some of the series that i'll be doing uh, one of the other things i'm also planning on doing is i'm planning on having a, a yorkshire national team save uh essentially like a, a weird club and country save um and potentially a Caribbean Super League save. So for the Yorkshire save, it will be um, basically we're going to make a national team for each of the main regions in the UK. Um, so it'll be the North East, North West, Yorkshire, uh, the Midlands, London, South West, South East. Um, I think are the main ones. I don't think I've missed anyone out there. So it'll be a national team for each of those. Um, the league system will be exactly as it is. So, you know, Vanarama up to the Premiership, nothing will change. And I will take over one of the lower ranked sides from Yorkshire and I will try and get them to the top, try and take over the Yorkshire national job and see if we can win a World Cup with them. Um, and I think that would be nice and interesting to see, you know, what the effects are of people being able to declare for their regions rather than England, because England will still exist. And pretty much every player in these regions will have English as a second nationality. Um, so what I imagine will happen is maybe 10, 15 years into this, there's going to be a bit of friction where, you know, for a lot of players might still declare for England, but increasingly more and more will declare for these regions, and these regions will get stronger because the the London region is going to have Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, West Ham. I'm definitely forgetting a team in there for some reason, but never mind. Um, North West is going to have both the Manchester sides, both the um, Liverpool sides, it's going to have some former Premiership winners and teams like Blackbird or historic top division winners like Preston and stuff like that. Uh, the North East might be a bit of a struggle. It'll have Sunderland, it'll have Newcastle. Uh, Yorkshire should be quite good because although there aren't many amazingly strong teams in there, there are a lot of decent teams in there with recent-ish Premiership history. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of competition Develops. So I'll be doing that. I won't necessarily do as many episodes for that as I do for um, 
Tahiti. Tahiti will always be my main one. I might try and do with the Yorkshire series and this kind of Super League series is maybe do a four to five episode season, kind of an intro episode, a couple of like a mid season, any key matches, just so you can see what's going on, kind of recap and look at the international stuff until it gets to the, the later stages. So it progresses nicely. And I'll do the same with the kind of Caribbean Super League. So my plan is to basically collapse as many of the Caribbean League systems as I can into one league system altogether um, and have them qualify for things like the CONCAF, whatever the kind of North American Champions League is, have them have their places there for that. That might be a bit trickier, not because the setting up the league's tricky, but setting up the qualification properly might be tricky. I might need to go back and actually re write almost how that continental competition works so people are qualifying from the right areas, or at least we've got enough places in our areas to actually make it worthwhile. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting because there's lots of different island nations, there's lots of different kind of national um, styles, there's lots of actually quite famous players from um, a lot of these nations, and because of the kind of links to uh, sort of, dare I say, it, colonialism, uh, colonialism um, there are a lot of British links to a lot of these islands as well. And also, personally, my mother in law's from Trinidad, my father in law's from Jamaica, so I'll probably be taking on a team from Trinidad. Um, so one of the circa warriors or one of the reggae boys if I take a Jamaican team and see how I can do with them but again I'll make that kind of a shorter part of the season and then time permitting there's one last thing I might do but this is very much a might all of these other ones I will do in some shape way or form even if it's only an infrequent kind of video and for the Yorkshire national side and for the Caribbean Super League I'll release those leagues for people to have a look at as well the other one I might do is a kind of brutality ball um, series. So I love playing hoofball. I might just have a series where I do nothing but play hoofball, where there is no um, holding back. I need to be as successful as I can be using the most direct and aggressive methods as possible. And I might give myself bonus points for how many yellows and red cards I get at the end. Um, or how much, in a way, of fines I've had from kind of disciplinary issues. So I rambled on a bit there. We've had that one match. Not much happened in it. It was a nil-nil draw. It's probably a good good thing. I had something else to ramble about. But those are my kind of plans for FM uh, 20. I'm also going to do a small editor series because I know I've had a request to do a bit more. I'm probably going to do that. I'll start that before FM 20 if I've got time. Just to take you through how I developed this one and how the league is structured so you can see some of the ins and outs of that. Uh, but here we are. So we're fourth... 32 points after 18 games. We've got a few coming up. Back to normal kind of um, play future. So I might come back for the Huahines match. Maybe the Takaro Terrors match. Not the Ace Chance match because they were beaters. And then back for the more rear and hump backs. And then maybe the more PR and Meow. That'll have us towards the end because we're not going to have any early games to play in between. This The end of this season should come up relatively soon. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank <music> you.